Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you three selections for tomorrow's racing. Now before we get stuck into them I quickly just want to reflect on how our tips performed today. In the end it wasn't a very good day as uh, none of our three selections gave us any profit. Uh, the first one of them, Lakeview Lad, he could only muster third place from the veterans chase there at uh, Haydock. He bumped into the well gambled uh, Black Lion who had really regressed over the years but you have to say, on his last couple of runs, there had been a little bit more of a spark. He finished sixth in the Grand National. He ran okay last time in a, in a warm handicap at Banger on D. So, yeah, the form was maybe there, but I just couldn't trust him. But, yeah, fair play to you if you uh, backed Black Lion. Uh, the long shot of the day. Now, that one was a little bit of a frustrating selection as he finished in fifth place in the end. That was uh, brimming uh, the brimming water there. Like I say, he was my long shot of the day. He was advertised at 28 to 1 each way. There were a few rule fours because there were some non-runners and because of the non-runners, the extra place terms went down. And in the end, he plugged on. He uh, snatched uh, fifth place and the most uh, places anyone was paying uh, was four places. So that was a little bit frustrating there and then the nap of the day wow william just summed up really just never got involved in the race at all wasn't uh, uh that quick out of the gates he was quite slow he was at the back of the field and in the end he just didn't have the pace to uh, to quicken and uh, make a challenge to win the race and in the end finished well back in the midfield so yeah disappointing day on the whole but like i say we have been on a good run of form of late and you can't win every time so the run was gonna come to an end at some point but yeah hopefully it's not too long and we can be back in the winner's enclosure for you tomorrow so like i said at the top of the video three selections for tomorrow's racing and i'm going to be going to win canton for the first one of them where i'm going to be going with my next best and my next best in this race is going to be earth business for brendan powell and colin tizard currently available a six to one. I just thought that Jane Williams horse here was taking a little bit too much of the market and despite winning impressively on both his starts so far I think this is arguably a little bit of a deeper race. I think he's been uh, beaten Deadwood at the likes of uh, Force Lass and Exeter and there isn't much substance to that form but I think this is a little bit of a deeper contest and I thought Earth Business despite having to uh, give away lumps of weight tomorrow I thought he was well worth his measure when he finished second uh, in not a bad little race at Fontwell, we did quite well that day. That was over two and a half miles. And I just think he got a little bit out of pace and just probably found the trip to be a little bit on the sharp side. I think he'll really relish a step up in trip tomorrow and he wouldn't have minded the, the recent rainfall we've had either. I think he'll be suited by that. If you actually look at his uh, pedigree, he comes from the, the family of Welsh Grand National winners. So in time, he'll probably make a chase up. But I think um, there was enough to suggest on that Fontwell run that he'll re relish a step up and drip. And if he's ridden prominently like he was last time, that might suit him. Uh, Wincanton uh, over the last year or 12 months or so uh, has been suiting horses that have been getting on the front end. Not too many horses have been coming from the back of the field. So if he's ridden um, towards the front of, of the field tomorrow and under Brendan Powell, you know, you know, and it gets a little bit tactical in this small field. I think six to one there, that isn't a bad price. We know the Tizard's team have been in a little bit better form. I think his form as well behind Nappers Hill isn't too bad. Uh, at the time, Nappers Hill, even though um, he, he'd been getting the job done, it hadn't been very impressive in the way he'd been winning his races, but subsequently some of his form has been stacking up. So I don't think that was a bad run at Chepstow. I think off a mark of 115, that's perfectly fair. And I think he's I think he's definitely going to outrun his odds in this race tomorrow. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if he got in the winner's circle. So he's going to be my next best of the day. We then go to the 207 at Leicester. Now this is going to be my nap of the day. And I don't normally tip up too many 10 to 1 shots as my nap. But I just thought Nordano here was such a big price. I'm really sweet on his chances tomorrow for Jamie Moore and Neil King. Currently available at 10 to 1 with the likes of Paddy Pans and Betfair at the time recording. I'm going to recommend a one point each way selection here. Now this horse, Nordano, um, he's starting to become quite well treated now. He's now eight pounds below his last winning mark, which came, his last win came when he won a decent pot at Ascot back in 2020. He won that when he was a juvenile, uh, when he was a four-year-old then. Obviously he's lost his way a little bit and he has fallen down the weight, but I thought his seasonal reappearance was actually quite an encouraging run. He ran in the class three contest at Lingfield and the winner of that race was a horse called Khan who's actually been quite a progressive um, horse over jumps this year especially over uh, staying trips 
And the horse in second place that day was Dolphin Square. And if you've been following my work recently, you'll remember we put up Dolphin Square to win a decent race at Newbury at the, the Labricks Winter Carnival there last week. So that form's taken a substantial boost. Also as well, I don't think he quite stayed the three miles. And this drop back to two and a half miles, I think, will be more his trip. Um, also as well, he's going to be wearing the first time visor, which just might be able to spark him up a little bit. Also as well, he'll probably be ridden prominently, which is no bad thing at Leicester. Uh, some of the horses I noticed the other day at Leicester that were up there in the vanguard were staying there come the end. And he could be just a game battling performer just to hold on, you know, and he could use the stamina to good effect. Neil King's team as well, they're not going too bad. They're operating at 22% strike rate in the last fortnight. Just thought there was a lot of things in this horse's favour to run a big race tomorrow. I don't think he'll mind the ground as well. A little bit of rain that would have uh, fallen over the last uh, couple of days. So I th just think there's a few things in this horse's favour tomorrow. I know they've got to have an inspection, but I'm quite hopeful they're going to get the green light. So yeah, 10 to 1. I don't think Nordano should be this price. He's got loads of things in his favour, and that's why he's going to be my nap of the day. I'm quite keen on his uh, chances there. We then uh, go to um, Market Raisin for an extra tip of the day in the 252 with a horse called Local Link for Charlie Hammond and Steph Hollins Head. Currently available at 8 to 1. I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Skybet paying four places on this race. Now, this horse, uh, Local Link, um, finished sixth in, in a race at Utoxa last time out. He actually didn't run too badly. I think he ran better. Uh, a little bit better than bear forms suggest uh, in that race. I think he'll strip fitter for that. And also as well, he's going to be stepping up in trip tomorrow to three miles, which I think will suit. Uh, he's actually from the family of, uh, of um, Somerville Boy. I think he's a full brother to him, if I remember correctly, who obviously won the Supreme uh, a couple of years ago and, and wasn't too bad. Uh, wasn't a bad horse at all for, for Tom George. So he's got a classy pedigree. He also as well has stamina in his pedigree to get further than two and a half miles, which is what he's been running over recently. So I think the step up and trip won't be a problem. Steph Holland had, had, Holland's head as well had a winner the other day. Um, obviously that big price one that won that uh, maiden hurdle. But I just think local link here, he could get the race run suit. There could be quite a bit of pace on him here. And if they do go hard, I could just see him getting a good turn to the race. And I think he's got strong credentials to uh, definitely be there or thereabouts. So at 8-1, I think he's a fair each way bet. And that's why he's going to be my extra selection of the day. So there are the three selections for tomorrow's racing. Let me know in the comments box below what you're going to be back in tomorrow. If you're still enjoying these videos, remember to hit the, sub, uh, the thumbs up button and subscribe here to my YouTube channel at LuckyLoader15. If you want to follow me on social media, Twitter is the place to do so. Where my handle is at LuckyLoader15. And if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk. So please come responsibly. Hopefully we can have some wins for you tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon.